And Patty, where is the axis going to be for the goniometer? It's going to be on the um, lateral epicondyle. Okay, very good. And can you, uh, Leslie, palpate that on the skeleton, please? Good. Now remember, uh, if which uh, epicondyle is easier to palpate? Medial. Medial. So if you have trouble, you can find the medial first and go right across to your uh, lateral epicondyle. So that's what we're going to line up the axis with of the goniometer. Uh, Patty, what will we line up the proximal arm, the non-moving arm of the goniometer? Um, the um, lateral midline of the acromion bicep. Okay, actually the lateral midline of the, of the what? The humerus. The humerus or the arm. And then you have a bony landmark to help you do that, which is what, Patty? The acromion bicep. Would you palpate that on the skeleton plate? Right okay. And then, Patty, what are we going to line up the distal arm with? Um, the midline of the radius um, styloid process. Okay, so the midline of the what? Right what is this here. part of the body called right here? Radius. You're, that's the bone that's right there. What do we call the whole arm right here? Oh, the forearm. The whole arm. <laughs> so midline, a forearm, or radius, and then you have a bony landmark that you're going to use, which is what? The styloid process. Show me that. Okay, so last time we talked about the ulnar styloid process. When we're doing medial lateral rotation of the shoulder, now we're using the uh, radial styloid process, which remember is on the lateral side of your wrist. Okay, would you palpate those three landmarks, please? Let's see lateral epicondyle first. Okay. Put a rough finger right on it. It almost looks like you're on it. Have him bend his arm, it's easier. All right, and uh, radial styloid process. Okay, why don't you measure his extension or hyperextension, uh, first of all? And I'm going to have, let's see, who will I have? Thomas, can I get you to go to the board? You're going to document this for us. 